If you don't know what Hyperdemon is, I made a review of it, but in short, it's one of the most fun, amazingly creative, addicting FPS games ever, where you spawn in an arena and kill demons as fast as possible. And it is entirely single player, other than having a leaderboard where you can compare high scores with other players. But a couple of days ago, Hyperdemon got a new patch, adding PvP. You access it by starting a new run, but instead of picking up the daggers, you right click the only bird, which does not fly away from you, and then you get teleported into a multiplayer lobby. The fights are 1v1, and the first person to get a kill 3 times wins the match. Tapping your left click fires a purple hitscan beam. You can fire it rapidly, but there's a very strong recoil making it almost impossible to aim. If you run out of beams, you'll have to wait a while before they recharge. You aim for the orb in the center. The more you hit it, the bigger the red weak spot in the center of the orb gets. If you manage to hit the red weak spot, the opponent instantly dies. To counteract that, there's a shield on your right click blocking incoming damage. Like the beams, it has to be recharged once it's down, and it degrades when hit and also while you are using it, so you can't just hold it up forever. If you get close to your opponent, time slows down, making the red dot much more realistic to hit, so you want to be really careful to not get caught out while recharging. There are only two more things you can do. Holding left click while on full beams will consume them to charge a projectile attack, which can one-shot the opponent. The only problem is, it can be shielded or even parried back at you, one-shotting you instead. You also can't shield while charging or cancel the charge, so you become super vulnerable and it's very telegraphed. But wait, what if you simply keep holding the charge attack and stare at your opponent as he holds his shield, until it eventually decays and then you one-shot them? The problem is, once your opponents realize they can shoot back, while keeping up their shield most of the time, or simply reacting to your charge attack as your precious orb is just standing there, waiting to get hit. Then it becomes a sort of mind game. Ok, so I can't just walk straight at them, and I can't fire it instantly. Maybe I wait half a second until they think I'm just going to stand there and stare at them before firing. Aha! Uh -huh. And maybe, in a later round, you do fire instantly because, obviously, only a complete idiot would do that. This weapon is just fun. Sometimes you don't land a direct hit, but you still do some damage, which gives you an opportunity to try and finish the kill with lasers. Your last option becomes available when you are on your last purple beam. If you hold left click in this position, you will fire a piercing beam, which goes through shields, but it also destroys your own shield in the process so it's kind of an all-in play. And that is it. It is extremely simple in concept. Then you just have the arena, which is pretty small, and you can very easily fall off. I think maybe a third of my deaths are to the void. And then there's also the movement, which I greatly enjoy. It's just a dash slash jump and a slide, but it allows for continuous momentum and you can curve your slides and slide jump off the map only to dash back in into another slide and just keep going. Unfortunately, I don't think turning away from the opponent and doing 360s makes you much harder to hit, but man is it fun to do. For this reason, I almost purely use the charged projectile, and also because landing a hit with it feels really good. It's like a rocket launcher from Arena FPS. And I'm top 50 in the world, so you know this playstyle is good. Only, that was right after the patch came out. In reality, the charge is hard to use against experienced players, because without any pressure, they will annihilate you with pinpoint precision, while you hop around like a dumbass, and they can usually just react and parry the projectile at any time. It's more of an option to use if you catch your opponent with their shield down, but who cares? It's fun and sort of a skill equalizer, because if you get the right timing, you could even beat someone with an aimbot. Will you do that 3 times out of 5? Probably not, but hey, there's a chance. Hyperdemon PvP doesn't really play like any other FPS multiplayer I've ever seen. It's almost more like a fighting game, with blocks, parries, mind games, and picking the right time to go on the offensive. Right now it's really fun, because people are coming back to the game, 
or perhaps even playing it for the first time, so almost everyone is rusty and learning. And at least for now, people just laugh about it, instead of trying to make each other feel bad. The only problem is the size of the player base. Sure, Hyperdemon has a small community, but still, I don't think making access to the mode sort of a secret was the best idea. If you don't read the patch notes, you have almost zero chance of ever figuring out this exists. And it's a shame, because you only need like 15 people to have zero downtime between duels. But the quick play function does not seem to work correctly with only like 4 or 5 people. So it creates this loop where you join and then have to wait for 5 minutes to play one match, fall off the map 3 times in a row and then you have to wait again. So obviously everyone just leaves and the lobby struggles to get to that sweet spot of players outside of peak hours. But at least for Europe evening time there are always people to play against. The small player base also means the ping is often quite high, since it matches people together from all over the world. But what's weird is that I don't actually feel the ping while playing. The movement feels smooth, and the abstract graphics and frenetic pace make it a bit hard to tell if hits are registering correctly or not, but I never once felt cheated by the game or a delay of my inputs, even when over 100 ping. So will this become the new biggest eSport? Uh, unlikely. But in my opinion, if you enjoy FPS games and you don't get seizures, you already absolutely need to play Hyperdemon for the main mode, so this is just some extra fun on top of an already one-of-a-kind game.